Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to review our properties, then we're going to learn how to convert something, and then we're going to reintroduce fractions into our lives because fractions are our best friends, right? So, example number 38, this is in your Skills 5A packet, and it's on this page that looks like this with the answers down at the bottom. So this is number 38 that we're doing together. Question number 38 says, all in parentheses, negative 2 times a to the third power, b to the second power, c to the zero power, all in parentheses, divided by 3 times a squared, b cubed, c to the seventh power. Now, all of that is actually being raised to the negative 2 power. And the question always comes up is, where do I start? And unfortunately, I have no better answer than it's your choice. If you wish to start inside and simplifying inside, you can. If you wish to flip your fraction because of this negative, you can. If you wish to bring the entire exponent onto every single thing, you can. That is your choice. I personally like to simplify inside before doing anything on the outside because maybe sometimes things can cancel out. That's, that's mine. For example, I'm going to choose to do inside, so I'm going to highlight these parentheses just to uh, show you that I'm doing inside. I'm going to look on top and I'm going to ask myself, is there anything there that I can simplify? Oh, I disagree with the no. Negative 2 is on the outside. Oh, this negative 2, right, because we do have a negative 2 here. What, el what else do we have? We have a 0, and what do we know anything to the 0 power is? 1. So we can't simplify. Uh, beautiful people, what is 1 times negative 2? Do we really need this 1? Nah. Because we're multiplying, that 1 kind of goes away. If it's the only thing there, then obviously leave it because you have to like, have something, but it's not there. Okay, the top part's done. Now let's go into the bottom part. Anything to simplify there? I hear no. 3a squared, b, no, nah. You got, you got all random letters. Nope. Okay, I'm going to highlight the parentheses again. I'm going to ask myself the same question. I'm not looking on top and then looking at the bottom. I'm looking at the top and the bottom at the same time. Looking at the top and bottom. Can I split things up and simplify? Are there numbers that are the same? Not numbers. Are there letters that are the same on top and letters that are the same on the bottom? Yes. yes. Okay, so let's do that. So we got negative 2 over 3. And I'm going to do brackets. I don't think we've done brackets before here. But I'm just going to put massive brackets around everything. So I can keep track of that outside negative 2 exponent. So this is what we had. Then we had a cubed over a squared. Then we had b squared over b cubed. Then we had, do you remember that one that disappeared? We can put it here if we want. It, or you can just leave it blank. It's up to you. It's just multiplying by 1. Now what happens when we are dividing? What do we do with the exponents? Subtract. Thank you for saying that. Absolutely. So we got 3 minus 2, 2 minus 3, and we got nothing, right? Because C, to, I don't know why I'm writing B. And we got nothing. So I'm just going to keep it down at the bottom. All of this is still raised to the exponent of negative 2. Beautiful people, what is 3 minus 2? 1. What is 2 minus 3? Negative 1. And this, again, we're going to keep it the same because it's just c to the 7th down below. If you want to put lines here so you can remember that a and b right now are on the numerator, you can. We have negative 2 on the outside that we need to make sure that it goes on everything. So negative 2 onto the 7, onto the negative 1, onto the 1, onto the 1 on 2. And then there's a secret 1 on 3 that goes on there too. So we got negative 2, 1 times negative 2, over 3, 
1 times negative 2, times a, 1 times negative 2, times b, negative 1 times negative 2, times 1 to the negative 2 power. Again, you don't really have to deal with 1. Realistically, it's not there. It's just like a placeholder. So I'm going to quickly erase that so I don't, I don't want to confuse you with that. It's not there. All we really have is we have that c to the 7 power in the denominator. Okay, bless you. So what we have here is that negative 2 I'm trying to think how they're going to perceive it. Let me, let me look really quick on the cheater side. Okay. So what they're saying is this negative 2 is in parentheses. So you don't see the parentheses, um, but, but they're there. That's how they're interpreting that data. So we want to make sure to interpret that same. Otherwise, your answer would be different. Okay. Ready? Negative 2 to the negative 2 power divided by 3 to the negative 2 power. You can put 3 in parentheses as well. Times a to the negative 2 power, b to the positive 2 power, and we got c in the denominator as c. 7 times 2 is negative 14. Again, right now a is in the numerator, b is in the numerator. c is in the denominator. That's why we have our line. If you don't have a calculator, go get a calculator, please. Do that now. Thank you. Everyone should have a calculator. All right, beautiful people. Let's talk about a few different things. What does it mean when we have a negative? You gotta flip it. So if I'm talking about a negative a to the negative second power, where does that a belong? On the bottom, ooh, careful. So we got a squared on the bottom. Uh, not right now, we're in the middle of the lesson. Then we got that b squared. Do we have a negative on that 2 right here? No. no, so we keep it, so it's going to stay on top. But now we have that C, negative 14. What? We've got to flip it, absolutely. So when you see a negative on an exponent, we've got to flip it. So that C to the 14th is now belonging on top. Now let's talk about the numbers. I got a negative 2 with a negative 2 power. So where does that negative 2, this one right here, where does this negative 2 belong? Well, what happens with the negative? It flips. So if we have this right here on top and we're supposed to flip it because of a negative exponent, where's that negative 2 going? The bottom. So we got negative 2. And once you flip it, remember, that negative just tells you direction. It's like I've been playing Mario, I love, I love Super Mario, so when you eat the little mushroom, the mushroom goes away, right? So it's like that negative. So we got the negative goes away, and then we have a negative on that 3. That 3 is on the bottom, so when we flip it, we bring it up top. So we got 3 squared. Let's write this out. What is 3 squared, everyone? Oh, I'll try again. 9. Uh, what is negative 2 squared? 4. Good. Okay, now we got an A on the bottom. We got a B on top. We got a C on top. So then this right here is your answer to the original question that you used all of these properties, these exponential properties or exponential rules for.